What is going on in the world right now has never happened in the history of the world. I mean, I knew our leaders were screwed up, but not this screwed up. The crash is bigger than I thought. So in March of 2020 was the biggest crash in world history of the stock market, but nobody knows anything about it because everybody's quarantined at home thinking about coronavirus and, and social distancing and wearing face masks. People are missing out on one of the biggest catastrophic cash heists in the history of the world. They don't even know what's happening. Now, the good news is this is the best time if you're ready for it. I'm going to make a fortune. So I want you guys who are sitting at home, you know, licking your wounds and wondering when you can go back to work and so you can get your lattes and cappuccinos and pizzas. Just know you might be missing one of the biggest opportunities in the history of the world because our governments have really screwed up. Something's fishy about this corona crisis. That is something very fit. Why did they have to shut down the whole damn world? And I think it's because they're covering up something very, very big. Now, if you're feeling bad, this is your program. If you're worried about what's going to happen to moi, this is your program. Our right. show today is, a, is the guy with the plan, the man with the plan, Brent Johnson. And I think he has the clearest vision of the future. So I want you to pay attention. I don't care where you live in the world, because I think Brent has as clear a vision of the future as possible. He's going to tell you what he sees coming so you can prepare for it. So if you can understand that, that's why this show is so important, because it's really about the future. It's very important. I want to hear what he has to say right now. Any comments, Kim? No, I just want to hear what Brent has to say, because as we said, you know, we're here about preparing, not predicting. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people have found out the hard way through shock that they were not prepared when the coronavirus hit, and who could have predicted that? Um, but so now we have an opportunity to hear from an expert on what you see, Brent, coming down the pipe. Essentially, what I think has happened over the last 10 years and what I think is going to happen over the next few years is that the world, you know, after the po after the financial crisis, the central banks just got together and just printed and printed all this liquidity. The U.S. is going to be the primary recipient of sucking in all that milkshake, all that liquidity that the rest of the world is printing. So the world, the world's printing money, but that's going to flow to the U.S. is what you're saying. Exactly. But my point is, is that whether you like it or not, the biggest demand for currency out there is the demand for the dollar. And despite the fact that they're printing a lot of it, the demand for it dwarfs the supply. So your thing is the dollar is going to get stronger. It's going to lift the U.S. economy and all yeah. our, our tangible assets here. But what is the demise? When's, well, when's well, it break? I, I think the monetary system is just not designed for the dollar to get stronger. Uh, and what and, it, and as it does so, it's going to just wreck the global economy. I mean, I think the rest of the world is going to just go through really, 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 you know, difficult right. time. Right. And ultimately, that's not good for the U.S. either. So as the dollar continues to get stronger, despite the Fed's efforts to, you know, bring it lower, I think eventually the, the world will have to come together in another Bretton Woods type conference or another Plaza Accord type conference. And I think they'll have to either write debts down or introduce a new currency or reset the system in some form or another. So with the coronavirus, because we yeah. don't know what is coming with that, how do you see in, in your world, what impact does that have in the future? They're going to print all these dollars and all this currency. And so when the, the COVID does leave and money is start to flow again, now you've got a lot more money out there and now it's flowing. So that's a, that's a recipe for inflation. But first you get the deflation, you, you print all the money, and then when the money starts to move, you get high levels of inflation because there's so much liquidity now. So I think we have deflation you know, for the next year, 18 months, and then we have inflation after that as, as capital starts to circulate again. I think the euro is probably gonna go away or it's not gonna continue to exist in its current form. I think on a price basis, it goes to at least 80. It's at 108 now, so it probably goes down 25 or 30% from here. I think the yen is going to go to at least 150, maybe maybe to two. The dollar is going to go back to its all-time high. And I think the rest of the world's currencies, even the big ones, are going to get cut in half. So if you're living in Japan, that means life will get more expensive. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Same as euro. Absolutely. Fiat currencies trade relative to each other. 
So even if you look at 10 fiat currencies and you realize they're all fiat, they're all horrible, one of them is going to outperform the other nine. And that's what I say with the dollar. Now, gold might outperform the dollar, but the dollar is going to outperform all the other nine. And you can make a lot of money playing the, the, the dollar versus all the other fiat. So if you don't want to put all of you, I understand owning gold. Everybody should own gold. But if you don't want to put 100% of your money in gold, then put whatever you don't have in gold into the dollar or dollar assets because the dollar is going to just crush, I think, all the other fiat currencies.